I saw the documentary about you, really very exciting. Congratulations. You. How do you feel knowing that uh, there are cameras following you to make uh, a documentary about you? Uh, it was so weird and it was such a different experience. Um, I said a couple times, like when we first started filming, the intention was not to get a whole entire documentary that span over like 16 months. We just thought it was going to be a couple weeks before I debut on SmackDown and that ended up not being the case. So after a while, I, saw, I got just like so comfortable with the cameras because it was like an every week thing. But um, it was just a cool experience and it's, I'm so grateful. I never thought I'd have a WWE documentary based off of my life. <laughs> so it's, it's so weird, but cool. And I just appreciate all the support that I received from it. Your surname and of course your mother's is the Dio, which is, yes. uh, this is very familiar here in Italy. Do you have uh, Italian origins? Yes, um, my dad is Italian and both of his parents came from Italy. Um, my mom has some Italian in her. So yes, um, my dad is very, very, very Italian. My name actually changed. So it used to be like D apostrophe A D D I O. Yes. And then when I guess, you know, we transitioned over here, we took out the apostrophe and it's just daddy <laughs> Have you any memories of Italy? No, no, no. I was born here and I've, I'm, I've been to Italy for WWE and that was just very short time. I didn't really get to explore or see anything, but I loved being there and it was super cool. So one day I hope to go back and do a little bit more exploration and research and see if I could find any of my Italian roots. <laughs> Your first uh, win at WrestleMania came uh, in a one-off uh, fun free edition. How sorry did you feel about uh, not having the fans around you and how much? Do you miss them now? Oh, I miss the fans so, 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 so much. We do this for the fans, you know, so to not have them there, it makes it a little bit different, but we know there's still the millions of people watching it at home. So it's still special and it's still important, but I definitely miss the fans. And at WrestleMania, I wish they could have been there cheering me on, but um, the world was in the middle of a pandemic and the show had to go on and we wanted to make sure we brought smiles to everyone's faces. So we had WrestleMania at the Performance Center with no fans, but um, I think it's still special because that's the first ever WrestleMania like that. And people are going to be going back to that WrestleMania for years to come because it was the one WrestleMania where there's no audience. And I happened to beat Natalia and win my first WrestleMania match. So it's really cool. In the documentary about you, uh, you are talking about uh, a rare ch chance to rewrite history with the Riot Squad. How much have you changed the, since uh, the, that stable debated uh, three years ago? Um, well, a lot has changed. You know, obviously, we're down one member, Sarah again. She's uh, um, going to be a mom. So, yeah, so all the things that we wanted to do as a team we were no longer able to do. So now that we do have the second chance, Ruby and I, um, we're not taking it lightly at all. We know there's no time to really um, not take it seriously. We want to be champions. We want to be the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. So it feels more serious and it feels more this time around because we may not have another chance. How much important was Sarah Logan in the Riot Squad? And uh, do you think that one day she can came back to complete the stable again? I hope so. I hope so. Sarah was so important. Um, when we got together as a group, Ruby and Sarah were already best friends. The oddballs kind of were worried for me that I wasn't going to feel like part of the group but right away we all just were so much more similar than we thought so I fit in right away and Sarah is she's like in the nicest way she's like not the friend you want but she's like the friend that you need you know <laughs> like she's a protector and she's so smart and she's so wise and like you know maybe sometimes her feedback and is annoying you know you don't always want her advice but you know that she's always coming from the best place with the best intentions so Sarah was super important she was so aggressive Sarah was so aggressive every time she was around I felt safe I was like no one's gonna touch me <laughs> but um I hope one day after you know she's being I'm sorry what 
No, no, go, go, go ahead. Okay, I, yeah, I, I hope that one day um, we can make the squad full again and have Sarah come back. I definitely think that's a possibility. Okay, with the Riot squad back, uh, will we see the blue song again? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I've been thinking about it because I love the blue tongue so much. I love the blue tongue and I know all like the kids that watched, they they would do a blue tongue and so I miss it. But I don't know. I don't know if it fits, you know, grown up live. I don't know. But I think about it all the time. Uh, when you joined the WWE, you said that uh, your family needed someone to make them proud. Now we have uh, achieved your goal. Uh, what is that now your relationship uh, with your mother and your brothers and sisters? Oh, it's it's um it's really good. It's really good. Um, they're just so proud of me. They're so proud of me, and they can't believe, you know, the past six years of my life. And um, they're just happy. They're just happy for me, and I'm so happy to have their support and to have them close by. They all like migrated from New Jersey, and they followed me to Florida. <laughs> So they're all here with me. Um, it's been great. Uh, Liv Morgan is a, a WWE superstar, but also a sex symbol. Is, oh. this, is this label a burden or a virtue? Uh, um, I don't think it's a burden. I mean, I every time I go out there, I never feel uncomfortable. I always feel confident. I feel comfortable with what I'm wearing. I feel comfortable with what I'm doing. So if that somehow translates to maybe I'm a sex symbol, cool. You know, um, I would love to inspire other women to feel confident and beautiful and what they're wearing and what they're representing. So I think that's awesome. Not a burden. <laughs> okay. In the construction of the first version of Lee Morgan in the main roster, did you also draw inspiration from Harley Quinn of Suicide Squad? So I get that a lot because apparently I guess we're a little bit similar, but um, I didn't watch Suicide Squad and I wasn't a fan of Harley Quinn. I knew who she was, but I didn't watch any of her stuff. And then um, I just was kind of doing what I felt was like natural. And then Suicide Squad came out and I was getting all these comparisons and I was like, okay, I've got to watch this movie. And then, so I finally watched it and I was like, okay, um, I totally see what people mean, but it's just kind of, um, weirdly natural and it's not um an inspiration off of her even though she's great but um but now 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 i watch and now i'm a fan and so um i think she's awesome i think she's awesome and if i could be a harley quinn i would <laughs> um you have developed the skills uh, in promo in uh, in the mirror uh, is there uh, uh -huh. any any champion you have studied for promos yeah Oh, totally. I mean, um, The Rock, Stone Cold, um, Paul Heyman, you know, CM Punk. There's so many um, great people in the business that can just go out there and just speak their mind and just make it flow so beautifully and it all makes sense. And they take you on like a roller coaster, you know, you want to listen to everything that they say because you're going on this journey with them. So yeah, there's, there's tons of more people that I didn't name that are great at promos, like Kevin Owens, he's so fantastic. Sami Zayn, so many great people that um, I want to learn from and draw inspiration from. Thank you very much, Liv. Thank you for